Hi there. This is Rachel from Lucid Day, and I'm going to talk to you about the workload widget inside of Monday.com. Workload widget is a really helpful feature when it comes to capacity planning, um, time management. So we are looking at the widget here, and we can see we've got people on the side here with our dates across the top. And then what's represented in these bubbles is the effort for particular items on this board. I say effort because the workload widget can measure anything in a number column. So for this particular example, we're looking at estimated hours, and these are assigned to the different tasks here with the individual owner and the due date. The workload widget can use number columns that represent story points or level of effort, like one through 10, anything that your organization uses numerically to measure the effort of an individual task or item. So with this example being estimated hours, we can take a look here. And right now we're looking at individual days, but we can look at weeks and months even. So we can take a look here and this is visually represented as these bubbles that show how much effort or how, in this case, how many hours are going into a particular day for any individual. Liam actually has 12 hours assigned to him for the 11th. And that's just no good. He only works 40 hours a week. And so a 12 hour day seems like a lot. So you click on this and we can see both of the items that are assigned to him for that day. So we can take a look at this information. This one is an estimate of four hours, whereas this one is estimated an eight, an all day sort of task. We can actually take this four hour and we can drag it to next week. You'll see also there is these hashes on the weekends and as well as Friday on Liam's, but not the other people's days. And so that is representative of his work schedule. I cannot put this here without a notice that it's scheduled on a non-working day. And so instead, I'll move it to next Monday. And by doing it here, we can see that the due date is actually updated as well. This is completely actionable. And so as far as the size of the bubbles, as you could guess, the bigger the bubble, the closer to capacity any individual is. We can see this person here has got seven hours scheduled, which is very close. But right here, Liam only has an hour scheduled for the 12th. So perhaps we decide we actually want to put this back here so it's closer to a full day. And we can also see back here when the bubble has a check mark that means they are exactly at capacity and if we were as you saw to see too many hours it turns red it's a really simple straightforward way of managing capacity we can also reassign these items to different people because we can open up this card and this is the live information, we can take this and instead of Liam, let's assign it to Tanya. We can see that jump down here and in live time, that item is now reassigned to Tanya for that same day with the same amount of effort. Now let's get deeper into the settings of this. So if we click on this gear icon here, this is where we are telling the widget uh, which pieces to measure. So we'll have the time based column and we can look at both items and sub items collectively. The resource type, which is uh, this panel here. Most often this is the people column for particular tasks, but this can be used in a variety of other ways. If we're looking at something like rented inventory, we could put the piece of equipment as the resource type and the time frame as the period of rental. And so we can see when things will be returned or how long it's going to be used for. But 
Most commonly, this is used for people and work week capacity. And speaking of capacity, by default, this is going to just simply count the number of items that are assigned. But using that number column, we can switch this to effort, which will show what we have just talked about. And we get to choose which number column represents the effort. And we also have the ability to tell it how to divide effort. Let's say this eight hour piece here. We actually want two people on this. So we will add Rachel and Liam to this eight hour task. And so this is asking, do we want to split that evenly between the people assigned? Or do we assume that that number should be applied to both? This one is split up here. This is also where we add the max capacity per person. And this can be any number you want here. If everybody is full time, let's say we put 40. But if we have somebody who works part time instead, then perhaps we put only 20 hours for that person and everyone else is 40. We can see that adjusts the visual for Tanya here, and she is right on track for her 20 hours a week. We can also show this number as a percentage. So this can be incredibly helpful if you are looking at more of like a level of effort and a percentage of, of effort is better for you. And we can choose to show the color legend, which we can color these items by any of the statuses or the columns, such as the status column. We can also affect the fiscal year. If your year is not a January 2024, let's say it starts in June for your fiscal year, you can adjust that here. And with all widgets, you can choose which group should appear on this widget. And with all widgets, you can certainly filter and uh, look at just one person at a time. And you can adjust, of course, to days, weeks, and months so that you can get a better understanding of long-term effort.